What's up, all of that? This is Frank. Just wanted to uh, come to you tonight. It is February 4th, 2009. Um, Wednesday. It's pretty cold out. Still got a little bit of snow on the ground. Um, some of you guys had half days of school today for some kind of child planning or something like that. I hope none of you are planning to have one. You know, just get that out of the way right now. So, um, wanted to try something different tonight for Matrix. Um, wanted to be able to give this to you uh, on a visual aid. And uh, you'll be able to also see these uh, up on YouTube. So, I'll publish this to YouTube this evening. So, um, wanted to give you guys a quick lesson tonight. Tonight, we're going to be going over the patterns of position. You're saying... Uh, what? Patterns of position? Are you crazy? Does this face look like it's a pattern of position? No. Um, let me read something for you. It's out of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. That's also to say, any of you that remember from Mark last week, uh, your memory verse, that'll come a little bit later. But in 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17, it says, do not love the world or anything in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and what he does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. So you're saying, okay, what does this mean? What does boasting mean? And what has he done for me? Um, the world's characteristics are summed up in a series um, a series of events here. Um, our desires as, as secular man, as sinful man, um, are patterns of history. We've got people from Darius II in Mesopotamia. You have Alexander the Great. You have all these men that desire power and um, authority. And there's more to it than that. See, in the Garden of Eden, Eve saw the fruit and saw it was good. She wanted it for herself. Uh, kind of like you uh, saw that she wanted those donuts. You know, you had to get through them really fast, you know. And um, she thought by taking of this fruit, that she was somehow going to elevate herself in life as um, amongst creation. And we'll never know if that's truly what she thought, but that's one aspect we can look at here. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took of it and ate some. Well, that had a pretty huge consequence for all of us. See, she was trying to change her position in life. Um, you'll be like God, Satan promised, you know, and we know how many lies that he does, you know, to us. But the truth was, she was only going to become a sh more ashamed and embarrassed of herself. Her position was that she was God's creation. And that she was created in his likeness. What's well, ashamed or embarrassed to be about about being that? I don't know. But the world deceived her. And thought that by giving her status or success. Um, or some kind of achievement. That was going to help her out. It's not the truth. Here's what God thinks about patterns of perspective or his perspective on patterns of this world see god gave up everything that he had through his son his son's the most important creation most important thing in his life first john 3 1 how great is the love of the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of god and that is what we are the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him Christ. Some of us may have not been born to a high class or upper middle class family. We may not have a lot. 
But as a follower of Christ, guess what? You have the greatest gift ever given to mankind. Yeah, that means you. There is no better family on this earth than being part of the family of God. See, God views us as friends also. And John 15, 13 through 15. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You may not have the greatest friendship with God right now. But all it takes is a little practice. A little bit of dedication and motivation on your part. Just just a little bit. And he views us as friends. We're not I mean, we're not acceptable. We're not perfect. Why did he choose us? We remained his likeness. And yet, we fall. We fell. And he still loved us enough that he sent a son. I don't know about you, but that's pretty cool. He also views us as heirs to his kingdom. In Galatians 4, 7 it says, so you are no longer a slave, but a son or daughter. And since you are a son or daughter, God has made you also an heir. Not like heir, but like heir to like the throne, you know. Um, the proverbial throne of his children, you know. It's not gained by wealth. It's not gained by the amount of friends that you have, the quantity of them. It's not gained by possession. It's not gained by what the eyes of man tell you is important in this life. It's gained by servitude. It's gained by serving God and loving Him and respecting Him. It's pretty cool, guys. It's pretty cool. The example of Christ is this. Philippians 2 Five through seven. Take a minute to get there. And while you wait, I will play some Jeopardy music um, <clears throat> uh, of myself. Uh, 